Welcome back to Traders Network Show's coverage of Humanity 2.0. We're broadcasting worldwide from the Vatican for Equities.com and our affiliated partners. My next guest, John Havens, is the executive director of IEE, specifically. Uh, actually, um, it's uh, IEEE, and I'm executive director of a program at the larger organization. Um, the, the actual executive director of the whole organization is a wonderful guy named Steve Welby. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Um, I'm executive director of a smaller program called the IEEE Global Initiative on ethics of autonomous and intelligent systems. And IEEE is the world's largest uh, technological um, uh, uh, organization dedicated to the advancement of the benefit of technology for humanity. That is, that is a mouthful. And, I, and you know yeah. what, the, the, <laughs> the world needs some complex solutions. So, but the important thing is you got a book that just recently got released, Ethically Aligned Design, yep. correct? Mm -hmm. uh, I like to talk a little bit about that, but we're here for the Humanity 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, we're here, it just kicked off. You saw mm -hmm. the opening ceremonies like we all did. Um, what does this mean for you and why is this important? Sure, well, I'm delighted to be invited. It's also gorgeous here at the Vatican. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an honor and, and quite humbling. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the organization is doing a wonderful job of asking issues about uh, how values and faith and ethics in terms of even what people don't think about as they walk through their day, how we make our decisions mm -hmm. based on the deep values of who we are. Mm -hmm. And the recognition that along with uh, things like law and ethics um, uh, that people might understand formally from things like principles that again, law or, or policy put out there. Most people live their lives by the laws that are sort of governed by aspects of either religion or the communities where they worship or, or, or hang out. You know, they are doing a great job of bringing in thought leaders to help project that message. And, you know, we're seeing a big insurgence of P3s, public private partnerships. And I think that we're seeing, this is a different form of that. Uh, bringing in private organizations to help project that sustainable message and impact message. Um, you came out from New Jersey. I did. All the way out here. Maplewood, Maple Essex <laughs> County, represent. You know, we are out from New York. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, we see a lot of Westerners here. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a chance to speak to the president of the university here and everything else. And it's, it's just amazing to see the Western support for the Eastern initiatives and, and um, the European initiatives. Um, do you see yourself participating long term with the Humanity Data? Well, I'd be honored to, you know, in the sense of, uh, especially you mentioned the intersection of the East and the West. We have a, a chapter in the book um, called Classical Ethics mm -hmm. in Autonomous and Intelligent Systems. And a lot of that focuses on things of Eastern traditions, Confucianism, Buddhism, the Shinto tradition, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Ubuntu ethics from the global South in Africa. And what's great for me as a Westerner coming from more Greek traditions you know, I wouldn't necessarily know <laughs> you come from a Greek tradition. That's formally, I just know sort of a sense of individualism versus uh, kind of communal well-being. And they both obviously have their merits and they're both at a paradigm level. Mm. Sometimes the word bias uh, has a negative context and we have to be very careful like with algorithms and things like racial bias, which is negative. The bias or just the perspectives where we come from in terms of our cultures that's why this organization is doing some fantastic work, because you have to understand the end user values mm. of who you're talking to, especially in our case, when you're trying to build technology that won't cause harm and will help. If you don't know what those end values are, then you may be harming without even meaning to. That's amazing. You know, you, you're getting into the uh, AI aspect of things. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about the book and how AI applies? A lot. Tell, tell us about the book a little bit. Cool, Matt, you were very nice to ask a good book. Um, <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. Um, so in one sense, it's more than a book uh, for us. Um, we launched it originally in 2016, about 100 global experts, not just data scientists and engineers, but anthropologists, social scientists, psychologists, launched this book with eight chapters um, as a request for input. And it's an academic oriented book, but it's also very pragmatic. It's got issues and recommendations. And I bring this up because principles are fantastic. And our whole first chapter is about general principles, things like human rights, human flourishing, very much what we're talking about here, and data agency, moving beyond this term of privacy and making sure that you and I and everyone has a level playing field for how they exchange their data. But then we got 500 pages of feedback a lot of which was awesome work, mm -hmm. thank you. Wow, this feels kind of Western. <laughs> so our, our tactic, as it were, is we went to uh, the fantastic uh, members now of our group who were from China and South Korea and Japan. Uh, now we have people from India and, and Brazil and Africa. Any of those voices who, first and foremost, they're experts in these systems. 
but secondly, they can lend their voices to say our perspective, our cultural values. You can't talk about ethics without recognizing what those are. So core of now this third version, because we had a second version, got even more feedback, over a thousand people looked at it. Uh, we consider it, uh, you know, obviously we're proud of it, mm -hmm. <laughs> but a sort of seminal resource for the algorithmic age. We designed it so that it's three years of work that all these experts did to save everyone else a ton of time. And that's academics, people from industry and policymakers saying, look at this, look at these recommendations. You don't have to agree with them, mm. but it's very hard sometimes to say, this is a recommendation after all this thought. Now you, we, we wanna give some people substantive recommendations to really, to, to work, work with, because we need to work and be pragmatically moving forward now. You know, uh, one of the other guests is attending here, in fact, he's sponsored, his name's Frank Ricotta. He's gonna be on a little bit later. We're interviewing him. Uh, we're familiar with Frank. He's been on our show before at Davos um, and recently signed a partnership with, with the International Trade Administration. His company is the US leader in blockchain, actually. So people, there's some speculation on who's, who's number one. Well, this itty bitty emerging growth company out of Denver, Colorado is, is mm. number one in the world right now. Um, and they just signed a partnership with the ITA. The reason why I bring this up is because the number one agenda on, on the ITA's list on the, on the finance side is AI mm. and FinTech. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you guys should get together. It'd be interesting. It's an interesting chat you guys would have. Um, but listen, we got to wrap up. How can people find this book? Where is it at? Where, is, can someone, is there a website that people can go to? Oh, sure. And thank you for asking. Yeah. It's uh, Ethics in Action dot i triple e dot org i believe that's it or if you use uh, the phrase ethically aligned design and use i e e e you can find it and again john havens we're always looking for people to join thank you very much thank you john you're watching the traders network show i'm matt bird we'll be right back with our next guest you're not going to want to miss this go, go, go. the 2019 humanity 2.0 forum is brought to you by cisco systems CSR solutions that are accelerating global problem solving in ways that have never been attempted before. To Ulala, providing mobile blockchain solutions for the unbanked. And to PledgeCamp, the next generation of crowdfunding. A special thanks to Tonico in Vatican City for hosting our program. And lastly, special consideration to Burst IQ, a leader in healthcare and blockchain, to Crown Sterling, a leader in digital sovereignty and quantum encryption, to Dignity Health, delivering high quality and affordable healthcare for all. And lastly, to Falcon Ventures, as transformative as our entrepreneurs. And thank you, One Public Relations, for all your PR and media support. We'll be right back after these messages. Don't go away.